Hi, this is Robert with Better Geiger, and today I'm going to try to make a quick video explaining some basics of using a radiation detector that some people are not familiar with. And specifically, I'm going to talk about measurement position, uh, where you put a detector, you know, near a source or an object, what that means, and what it means in practice, and what you should be aware of and understand. And specifically, that's called the inverse square law. So we'll get into all that. I'll start with my little outline. I'll talk about the test setup I have. I'm going to do some uh, demonstrations and show some results with a, with a little exper experimental setup. The concepts that it's uh, going to try to explain, some of the math behind it, but don't worry if you're not interested in that, you can kind of gloss over that and I'll try to uh, explain it sort of conceptually as well. Uh, and then I'll try to explain what that means in the real world, what the, the test results show, and then finally, you know, practically how to understand this these concepts and understand them in, in the real world when you're potentially doing some kind of measurements of your own with a radiation detector. So to start with, we've got the test set up. I'll explain it and then we'll get to the results later. But basically, this is a better Geiger S2. And today... Uh, we're mostly just going to be paying attention to the counts per minute. So that's the how many counts per minute the, the sensor is picking up, how many how much radiation is interacting with that sensor per minute. And specifically, there's a mode called since power on, which shows how long it's been on, the average counts per minute during that time, average dose rate, total dose. And what's important is that you can press this button and then reset that number. So here you see it going back to zero. And then if I were to put it in a, so this setup uses it without the, without the rubber protector. So if I put it in a specific position, I could let it run for a few minutes after resetting it and I would get a very much more accurate number. Whereas the, the normal readings show it kind of live information jumping around a bit. So this allows you to do a little bit more scientific kind of stuff. And the way this test setup, this is a 3D printed thing I made. It's got a cesium-137 check source right there. And it has these little slots where I can move this pin wherever I want it. And that will set basically the position. So I can have kind of an adjustable thing here in a simple way. And basically it's set up to where the very closest one stops it so that at the closest position, this to this is exactly three centimeters. And then if I move the pin to each of those one centimeter steps further away, uh, you can't really see those numbers, but the distances are there. So I have from one to about 25 centimeters where I can change this position. And like I said, this video is about sort of measuring position and what that means and you know, this is a little bit of a simplified setup, but it'll hopefully illustrate some of the concepts later. But we'll put that aside for now and get into some of the concepts of what I want to explain. So if you imagine a radiation source, it's giving stuff off in all directions generally. So, you know, a cesium source like this is emitting gamma rays kind of going all over the place. And it's, you know, emitting some amount per second or per minute. So if you imagine that spreading out, a certain amount spreading out uh, over three dimensions, you can imagine it kind of filling a, a, a sphere around that source. So as you move further away, it's spreading over a larger and larger area of that sphere. And depending on the distance or the radius of the sphere, which would be like moving further away from the source, you have the area of this sphere as 4 pi r squared. So area is 4 pi r squared. And you can imagine as that, as you move further away, that sphere gets bigger and this stuff that's emitted by is spread it over, uh, spread over a much larger area. So this is kind of how, you know, the very basic image of, of what that source is doing and how the radiation is spreading. But as you can imagine, when you go a little bit further away, that, that area gets bigger a lot faster than this distance. So that's where we step into the math of it a little bit. So 
I'll change the variables now. <clears throat> I'll call the s strength of the source s. So the s will be like how much it's giving off in all directions. The distance is d, and the intensity at some po point is i. And that's basically decreasing according to the the area of this, um, the surface area of this sphere around it. So to make that a little more concrete, um, here we have sort of the, the derivation of some basic formulas. And again, don't, don't worry if this is too much math for you. If you're not interested in this, you can gloss over it. But for those that are interested, you have the intensity. I can probably leave that there. Um, you have the intensity is the, the source strength divided by, this is the area of that surface area of that sphere, 4 pi times the distance squared. So if you have two situations where the source strength is the same, then you have distance 1, intensity 1, distance 2, intensity 2. These two things are equal, which means these, these two, uh, this side is equal to that side. So s equals s becomes 4 pi d1 squared times i, i1, equals 4 pi d2 squared by i2. And so that 4 pi cancels out, and we have d1 squared i1 equals d2 squared i2. And rearranging that, we basically get the intensity at position 2 is equal to intensity at position 1 times dis uh, distance at 1 squared over distance at 2 squared. So with this formula... If you know in some measurement position um, how far away it is and what you're measuring there, that could be a dose rate or a count rate or something like that. Um, and then you go to a second distance here, which you know the distance again, you can estimate what that new intensity is as you go further away from a source. So that's some of the math. To give an example, which is hopefully kind of illustrates it, Let's say some, some sources, uh, you measure 100 at a given position, uh, intensity of 100, let's say, counts per minute or, or some dose rate like microsieverts per hour or whatever. So if you measure an intensity of 100 and you go to a new position, if you started at 10 centimeters and you go to a second position at 20 centimeters, uh, and you want to estimate basically what that reading will be twice as far away from 10 to 20 centimeters. So intensity, this is that formula I showed before. I1, D1 squared over D2 squared. I1, you know, this would be 100. 10 squared over 20 squared is 100 over 400. And then basically the first intensity is multiplied by 1 over 4. That's 100 over 400, which would be 25 compared to 100. So that's four times less. And Basically, this will hold true no matter which um, numbers are here, as long as if one is double the other, if it, the distance is double, then you're always going to have four times lower intensity. And if I did the same thing with um, going from 10 to 100 or 20 to 200, or if I make it uh, in any way 10 times more distance, you can put those numbers in, it'll come to 100 times lower intensity. So, you know, if you're one foot away and you go to 10 feet away from a source, you're 100 times less, uh, exposed to 100 times less intense radiation field at that distance. So you start to probably see the importance of, of distance and the 1 over r squared relationship or the uh, inverse square relationship. So that's basically the very, very quick and dirty explanation of the math. And now we can talk about basically, you know, what this test shows. So I didn't do it on camera because it would take too much time, but I basically put it at three centimeters, six, nine, 12. And then each time I let it measure for about five minutes or so to make sure that the, the measured count rate averaged over that time is pretty accurate. So three, six, nine, 12, you know, moving it around uh, according to whatever position setting it. And that's basically the experiment. And so if I were to show that on a, on a curve here, which I've done in advanced, you see the count rate and counts per minute and the distance. And I, I forgot to mention, I did one 
measurement where it was very far away so that it was considered, you know, almost no um, influence of the source on the count rate. And I, I considered that my background reading, which is important because you, you always need to subtract background if you're doing something like this. So there's, there's radiation, you know, there's cosmic, terrestrial, whatever, natural radiation coming from all sorts of places. And that will cause this to have uh, a reading, a background reading at all times, regardless of if there's a source or not. So that that's kind of a baseline number that has to be subtracted. So when I did those four positions, I subtracted the, um, the background from each one. And then here you see distance, 3, 6, 9, 12. Count rate counts per minute. So this curve here is a theoretical curve generated basically using that formula shown before here. And I made a curve, sort of a theory curve. And then I put my four measured data points on that curve. And as you see, it agrees quite well. And so this is just kind of showing that, you know, the, the, the inverse square law has been kind of verified and, and we get an impression where, you know, going from three to six, we see it drops about, you know, roughly four times lower. Um, six to 12, again, you can't see it very clearly, but it does. So finally, I mean, getting more to the practical meaning and that's where it's really important. Um, if this, you know, stop is set now the distance is three centimeters. So if I were to go just a little bit closer, you know, right on top of it, or I take the source and put it right on top, and then now maybe the, the distance is one centimeter. Um, just that little, little difference is going to make it go three squared nine times higher. So basically going from there to there, gives you about a nine times higher response from the detector. So the reason this matters is in one case, people often will do a measurement of some object and they'll say, I measured this count rate or that count rate, or this dose rate or that dose rate. Well, for one, different detectors will have different count rates based on how sensitive they are, but also just a tiny variation uh, in, that, in that position. Maybe they're moving their hand around, maybe they're whatever. Um, that will cause, you know, maybe two, four, eight, ten times difference in the response. So you should be very careful comparing one object to another or comparing, um, you know, one person's reading to another because it can be very, you know, very jumpy. So I can just do a, a very close one here and you'll basically see, you know, while the well, the count rate here went up to about, uh, I don't know, 1100 or so. When I just make it a little bit closer, now it's already 7,000. So that's kind of one thing to be very careful about when, when doing measurements or comparing measurements. And, you know, even if you're very careful, that is not a very reliable way. So, you know, that's just something to be aware of. The second thing, um, and I forgot my drawing, but... If you imagine basically, you know, this is the source and you're holding this thing in your hand. And even if you're in a dose rate measuring mode, so now it's showing dose rate. If you put the, the detector right here and you say, wow, I got this dose rate from my detector. Well, the problem is this dose rate is assuming your whole body is uniformly exposed to that level of radiation. So it's, it's giving you a whole body effective dose. I mean, most detectors will will automatically show that kind of information because it doesn't know, the detector doesn't know where it is. It doesn't know if it's, you know, on your chest pocket or directly on a source at arm's length or sitting somewhere else. So basically, if you use this number and you try to estimate, oh, I'm, I'm in a hazardous radiation field because my detector shows this, the problem is if you're holding it here, you know, your body is somewhere further away like there. So basically, if you measure it one inch away and you're 10 inches away or, or your, your distance of your torso is maybe 20 inches away, you're, you know, 100 times, 1,000 times lower exposed in those positions uh, relative to what the detector might read. So if you're going to measure something 
in terms of health risk or something like that, you should make sure your detector is a couple feet away or somehow representative of where your body will be. So, you know, if you have something in the corner and you measure it there, but you spend all of your time on the other side of the room, then you should just factor that in if you're, you know, assessing some, some radiation reading and what it might mean to your exposed uh, dose rate. Of course, with a little source like this, it's not much of a concern, but um, people who work with much stronger sources have to think about the, these things if they need to have certain distances and take safety into account. So, you know, this is kind of a preview maybe for a future video. Uh, the three main ways to protect yourself from radiation are time, distance, and shielding. So being exposed less, increasing distance, or increasing shielding. And, and really distance is one of the most potent ones because if you go twice as far, you're four times lower and a little bit more, it goes down rapidly. So, you know, distance is, is really the key. And perhaps I'll get into that in more depth in another video or get to some other topics. So um, if this is the kind of content you're interested in, please, you know, help, help the visibility, do the things the algorithm likes, liking and subscribing and so forth. And that will clue it into me that people want more of this and I'll make more of this. So if that's what you want, please let me know and help the visibility, you know, comment down below if you have ideas for other topics you want to learn about, or if you like this format or don't like it or whatever. Um, like I said, I'm Robert from Better Geiger. Go to bettergeiger.com if you want to buy this detector or, or something else. I don't sell these sources, but I do sell a small quantity of uranium ore, which is an ad, potential add-on to the um, to the detector if you want to be able to do sort of your own tests and you can do some similar things like this. So that's the video. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful and I hope you learned a little bit about practical use of radiation detectors. And if you want more of this, let me know. Thanks.